Most outdoor cable designs are what we call loose tube designs. These have hollow tubes with fibers inside the tubes, covered by an outer jacket and perhaps even armoring. These outside plant cables are filled with something to block moisture. In the case of this cable, it's, going, it's a, um, a silicone gel. So what we do with this cable is we have to open it up and clean it with a cleaner and wipe it to make it sure that it's clean and dry before we can uh, splice it to another cable or before we can um, terminate it. So same process as before. Check the um, depth of the jacket at the end. Make a test cut about four inches up. Break the jacket and it'll be fairly hard to pull off because of the gel that's inside the cable. It's a very, very stiff jacket. This jacket is not the flame retardant polyvinyl chloride that we use inside. It's actually a polyethylene, which is chosen more for its moisture resistance. Now you can see here's Kevlar, a rip cord to rip back the jacket, binder tape, and tubes. Each of these tubes has fiber in it. They're little small plastic hollow tubes filled with gel. So each tube is filled with gel and several fibers. Each of the tubes is bound together. Everything is flooded with gel and, and then it's over jacketed to make sure that it has the absolute maximum amount of, of protection for the fibers against moisture. We're going to take another cut on this and take a look at it when you go further back. Uh, or we can use the um, ripcord to rip the jacket off. In order to uh, work with loose tube cable, we're going to need to open up a fairly large length of the jacket. Uh, we'll probably need about three to six feet of the jacket removed in order to work with it. And the easiest way to do that is to use the rip cord. The way we do the rip cord is we take a pair of needle nose pliers, simple needle nose pliers, grab the rip cord and twist it around the jaws of the pliers. We just keep twisting. It's the old sardine can routine. And you notice it will just start going right down the jacket. If we're only doing a short distance, we can just twist it. But once we get far enough down the jacket that we have a um, hand grip, we can just grab the pliers. And now we want to push it along the jacket. Don't pull out from the jacket push right down the jacket and we can take off all of the jacket we want. Down to the point we pull the rip cord, we take our jacket slitter again, ring the cable one more time, break the jacket at that point, now we can go back to where we open the cable up and pull the jacket off. It helps when you're pulling the jacket off to use the um, pliers to start the, uh, the interior of the cable out of the jacket. Continue pulling the inside out until you reach the point at which you cut everything you cut the jacket and we can easily remove it. Now you see we have a large amount of Kevlar. We have to unweave this Kevlar. We can also pull it down at the end and cut it with Kevlar scissors. It's slippery so it helps to hold it. And now we can slide that off the cable. We remove the binder tape.
And after you've worked with this for a while, you understand why the nickname of this cable is Icky Pick, because it is indeed icky. Very, very sticky. Cut off the binder tape and the pull cord, the rip cord. Now this particular cable has a heavy center strength member. It also has two flexible plastic fillers. It's a small fiber count cable. It only has four buffer tubes with fibers in them, all color coded, and it has two buffer tubes that are unused. So we'll take a cutter and cut those off and remove those. Then we have the central strength member, which is a fiberglass rod to make it stiff. We don't need much of that. We'll use a small amount of that at the um, beginning to um, hold it in the splice closure. So we'll cut off that rod and discard that. And now all we have are some very messy buffer tubes. We'll clean those with what's called D-gel. D-gel or uh, hydrosol are two trade names for moistened pads that are designed to remove the uh, gel inside a cable. When you um, open these up, you'll notice immediately a citrus smell. And um, I've been told that in emergencies, when these are not available, that people have actually used lemon juice bought from the grocery store to remove the, uh, the coatings on the, the gel on the uh, tubes. But you can see that this is very, very efficient. It only takes a few swipes. And we can get the tubes nice and clean. You can then also use it to get it off your hands. And then it helps to have some wipes around wipe your hands and then wipe each of the tubes to dry them off. Now, we've dried the tubes off. We're almost halfway there. The next thing we need to do is we need to get into the tubes to get to the fibers. Do a little more clean up here. There's two ways of doing that. The preferred way is to use this, this tool, which is a standard small coaxial buffer stripper. Uh, it's used for cutting the jacket of coaxial cable. Uh, we use it on the buffer tubes because what we want to do is we want to twirl it around and score the tube, and then we're going to break it over our finger. We have to do this very gently because we don't want to simply cut into the tubes because we might harm the fibers. Like that. If you go too far or too hard, it may snap right through the tube. We can pull the tube off, and there's our fibers. Get our cleaner again, and you can clean the fibers right off. And inside there are actually two fibers. So that tube has two fibers. Let's try it on another tube. We don't want to, um, it, the amount that you have to twirl it depends on the uh, tension on the um, stripper. What we want to do is score it, ideally, just snap it. Put it over your thumb, snap it snap it the other way to break it off just to make sure that you don't harm the fibers and then pull the tube out and discard the tube. 
clean the fibers. Now I know what everybody's thinking at this stage and that is that you've got to be able to use a standard stripper for this, wire stripper. And the answer is yes, people do it uh, and I'll show you uh, how to do it. Uh, but uh, I want to make sure that you understand I don't like this process, I don't think it's a good idea, and it does have the potential of harming the fibers unless you're very careful. However, people do it. Nick, bend until you break, twist, pull it off. Clean the fibers. Okay, so there's three of our tubes and we'll do it again on the fourth one. Just make sure that if you're doing this you have it set to a fixed level so that you know what level to do it at. Score, break, twist, pull the tube off and clean. Okay. So now what we've done is we've taken our cable, see if we can show the whole thing. We've taken the jacket off, we've taken the um, Kevlar strength members and the center strength member and cut them back. We have buffer tubes to bare fibers. To terminate this, we'll probably splice this to another cable. So what we'll do is we'll bring the cable into a splice closure. The tubes will be clamped into a splice tray and the fibers will be brought together with other fibers and spliced either in a fusion splicer or with mechanical splicing. So that's how we handle then a loose tube cable. If you do have to terminate this, you're probably going to have to put on each individual fiber a reinforcing tube. We call these breakout kits. You'll actually clean each fiber and dry it, put powder on it, and put it up inside a small tube that will be protecting it so that you can put a connector on it. That's a very, very time consuming process. It's probably why most people would prefer to splice pigtails onto a cable like this than try to terminate it because it's actually faster and cheaper.